So a few months ago, I bought this battery with my own money, but I saw a bad review shortly after I bought it, and then they pulled the listing from Amazon, and I'm not sure why. The bad review wasn't really bad at all. The guy said that he didn't like the battery, but he didn't go into any details at all. But this company has their own website, and they're selling that battery there instead. So we're going to open it up and see if there's any problems inside. And this is the same battery case about 10 other distributors are using. And that, in my opinion, is somewhat of a red flag. Sometimes we get a surprise and there's a good battery inside, but you never know. So let's open it up. Also, I forgot to mention, I did do a capacity test on this a few months ago and it passed. So that's a good sign. I just hit something. I hope I did not hit the cells already. I hit metal, but I don't see what it is. Ah, oh, darn it. We'll have to go in from a different side then. So the cells are in the center and guess what? This BMS is very familiar. I think I just opened up a battery a couple weeks ago with this same BMS. So this is interesting. Check out this cable. It was smashed into this little spot where the screw goes. I didn't know there was screws to open this up. And that must have happened during the assembly. And that's pretty dangerous. Now you have an exposed conductor inside of a battery case near the battery terminals. And there's nothing besides this foam that's protecting them. But the cells look brand new and the build quality on the cells is actually pretty good. Also, this BMS was on the Waze battery. We tested that like a month ago. Um, and that BMS actually held up pretty nicely. Uh-oh, look at this. So there's only a high temperature sensor. There's no low temp sensor anywhere. That's not good. Yeah, this is a high temp sensor. What a bummer. Let's test it out real quick. So right now we're charging with 10 amps. And it works. But it's pretty useless on lithium iron phosphate to have one of these high temp sensors on the cells. This should be a low temp sensor only, and then you should have a high temperature sensor on the MOSFETs on the BMS. And we can test it for fun, but I know it's not gonna trigger it. Even though I know it won't trigger, it's best to test it on video just in case this company gets mad at me or something. Yeah, we're not getting anything. This is a high temp sensor though, but it doesn't show at what temperature it triggers at. So that's kind of strange. Usually they always show that. But yeah, it's not low temp sensor at all. So that means that this one doesn't have low temp charging protection. But this BMS does have versions of itself that have low temp charging protection. So it's very strange to me that they didn't add that to this battery. Let me show you real quick. Actually, there are quite a few differences between these two batteries. The only thing they have in common is this BMS. So on the right, we have the Wheeze battery, and on the left, the Doctor Prepare battery. And you'll notice that this one has a low temp sensor, and this works perfectly. And this one doesn't, but there are two tabs to solder a sensor right here, but they don't have it connected. I also realized something else. The high temperature sensor, which is connected to the cells, on this BMS, is actually connected in the same spot on the PCB, but it's connected to the heat sink for the FETs. So I'm guessing this one doesn't have high temp protection on the BMS, which is, in my opinion, a complete failure. You need to have it right here. It's so strange that these are the same BMS, but this one is made properly and this one is not. How interesting is that? Also, the cells are entirely different. This one on the right has welded bus bars and this one kind of looks like an Ampere Time battery. It has like the same leads and the same bus bars with the screws. So very different batteries, even though they're using similar parts. But in my opinion, I would avoid the Doctor Prepare battery. This exposed conductor inside of a case and also the temperature sensor configuration is unacceptable. But I still like this BMS when used properly. We need to keep an eye out. When people have this BMS, it doesn't mean that it's a good design. You have to look inside under the heatsink and ensure that the temperature sensors are in their appropriate locations. 
Something else that I thought about that I really need to reiterate is it wasn't my blade that hurt this wire. If you look at its location, there is frayed wires inside of the plastic case under that screw. So that wasn't my tool at all and I did not cut over there. Because I know some people are gonna see this and say, hey, did you nick it with your tool? Absolutely not. The wire strands are actually in the case. That's how bad of a job they did. And then they just tightened it down. Also, the metal that I hit on the case is in the sides and it's where the screws are. So it was not that wire. Anyways, just have to make sure no one complains about that because if I was watching this video, I'd be like, God, oh, what an idiot. He probably cut that wire with his tool, but that is not the case at all. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. I will have more videos, especially on 48 volt server rack batteries very soon, but there are some huge shipping delays, unfortunately. I have some really cool videos planned and they'll be out in the next couple weeks or so. So please check back soon. Anyways, I hope you guys liked the video. I sure liked taking these apart and I will talk to you later. Bye.